Can you guys hear me well? Assalamu alaikum. Good morning, everybody. Mashallah. Hi, Mashi. So, you know, a good amount for 9 a.m., Mashallah. It's better than the. That's good. Um, all right, so today, God willing, I want to talk about happiness and I want to talk about specifically perfect happiness, inshallah, God willing. Um, so, we know. Everyone in the world, right, they're always seeking something. They're, they're trying to look for something to make them happy, to make them feel, feel good. Um, so first I want to start out by looking at the many ways people try and find happiness in this life. So what are some ways people seek happiness? One uh, is money and success, right? Um, a lot of people, they seek money and they seek power and they think that by having all of you know, these luxuries and this money, um, they'll feel happy, they'll feel good about themselves. Um, and also, they think that if they are rich, that they will have people's respect, right? That they will feel good about themselves in that way as well. Um, another way is food. Some people also try and eat to, to feel happy, um, to feel a sort of physical joy, right, a physical happiness. And this is often referred to as emotional eating. So I feel like a lot of people maybe can relate sometimes, like if we're frustrated or if you're feeling sad or angry, sometimes, you know, people eat to just feel, feel good, feel something, you know, that tastes good. Um, all right, so another one, a uh, huge one that we all know of, are drugs and alcohol and medication, right? Um, so... A lot of people, they, they drink to, to feel good at a, at a party or at a wedding, right? They drink to feel confident, to feel good and feel happy about themselves. Or many people will drink or, or do drugs to escape their problems, to, to feel happiness in that way. Um, and then in terms of medication, some people, they're diagnosed as, uh, with depression, right? And they're told to take happy pills to, to make them feel happy through this medication because it's something, you know, a chemical imbalance or something in, in their head, right? So this is one way people try to be happy, by taking happy pills, believe it or not. <laughs> um, another way um, is through family. Um, they, they look to their, ha their family for happiness. Um, for joy, and they, you often hear things like, family is everything, right? That's the most important thing to people, and they think that if they don't have family, then they won't really feel happy, right? They won't feel satisfied in life. Um, they need to be loved by somebody or and, and love them back. This is something that, you know, a lot of, people, that's how they think that they can be happy, is through other people and through their love and their family. Um, and then another one are good looks, right? Um, so that can be like, so they spend a lot of time and money to attain an image. That could be through, through many ways, clothing, uh, plastic surgery, or just spending so much time in front of the mirror before you want to leave the house, right? They, they think that if they feel good, um, if they look good, they'll feel good about themselves. They'll be, they'll be happy, right? Um, and another way in, in recent years is, is actually building their, their social media image. You know, things like Instagram or Facebook, um, you know, people think that by representing their life through social media in such a, an amazing way that they'll, they'll be happy, right? They will um, appear to be happy, at least, and they spend a lot of time towards that. 
And the, the last one I have here is work. So I've actually met people who they work to es escape their problems and to feel happy. I met somebody recently who, um, you know, she, I was like, oh, so, so where are you from? What do you do? And first thing she says is, well, I'm a workaholic. That's basically all I do. And in this way, you know, I asked more about this. You know, well, what about your family? What about your, you know, your hobbies? And it was interesting, she was saying that by working so much, she doesn't have to deal with problems in the family or deal with problems with friends. So she was seeking happiness through focusing completely in her work, in her job. Um, so, regardless of all of these materials that I just listed or these attempts to be happy, we know that the disbelievers can actually never be truly happy. It's impossible, right? And why? Why can they never be happy? Why can they never achieve happiness? Um, because everything I just listed is actually an idol. It becomes an idol for them. And we know that whatever you give power to besides God, that becomes your idol. And so majority of people in the world, when they're seeking happiness through people, through materials, looks, all of that, they're giving it power. They're, they're thinking, oh, this can make me happy, right? And that's what becomes your idol. That's idol worship. Um, and in the Quran, actually, we have an example um, of what happens when you, when you give power to other than God, right? We know the, the story of Joseph um, when he was in prison, and one of his prison mates was, was about to leave, to be freed, right? So in, in verse 1242, we read, uh, it says, He then, he, which is Joseph, he then said to the one to be saved, Remember me at your Lord. Thus the devil caused him to forget his Lord, and consequently he remained in prison a few more years. And the footnote here that explains it uh, says, When Joseph begged his companion to intercede with the king on his behalf, he exhibited dependence on other than God to be saved from the prison. This does not befit a true believer, and such a serious slip cost Joseph a few years in the prison. Right? So that was his consequence. He gave power to other than God, thinking that, oh, this, this guy can help me. This guy can make me happy, right? And, and he ended up staying in prison a few, a few more years. And then the last sentence here says, We learn from the Quran that only God can relieve any hardship that might befall us. A true believer trusts in God and depends totally on him alone. So... You know, this example here, right, and many verses in the Quran, we're so blessed to, to actually know the secret of perfect happiness, right? And this is a huge, huge blessing because, as I listed before, people are constantly going to dead ends trying to find something to make them happy, and they're never fulfilled. They're never truly happy. Um, so here... Chapter 2215, happiness now and forever. If anyone thinks that God cannot support him in this life and in the hereafter, let him turn completely to his creator in heaven and sever his dependence on anyone else. And here's the, the part. He will then see that this plan eliminates... Oh, sorry, the last part is cut off. But it says anything... Um, that will bother him. Yeah, sorry, anything that bothers him. Sorry, that got cut off right there. But um, so there, right there, right? Anything that bothers you, if you follow this formula here, it will be gone. You, will, you won't have any problems, right? And, and what is this verse explaining? It's saying that we should depend only on God. Um, and depending on anything 
means that you think that you need it, right? You need it to, to feel happy or you need it in your life. Um, and we're told that we only need God, right? And we know this and we see this in our lives because, you know, people, they, they let you down. They mess things up. They don't have any power. They can't help you. They can't do anything. Um, yeah. And then I have another verse. Chapter 10, starting from verse 62. Happiness now and forever. Absolutely, God's allies have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. They are those who believe and lead a righteous life. For them, joy and happiness in this world as well as, as, well as in the hereafter. This is God's unchangeable law. Such is the greatest triumph. And again... You know, God is telling us in so many verses how to be perfectly happy, right? Is to worship God alone. And 3917, as for those who dis discard the worship of all idols, which is making sure you don't give power to anything besides uh, God, and making God your number one thought, right, throughout your day, uh, it says, and devote themselves totally to God alone. They have deserved happiness. Give good news to my servants. So, in conclusion, the, the point is that, you know, I listed all the ways that people try and find happiness, but believers seek happiness only from God. And this shows that, that that's, you worship God alone, right? Because anything you need, anything you want... You go directly to God, and, and that's the source of it. That's it. Thank you. <laughs> Questions, comments? Okay. Mashallah, very good. <laughs> Very good speech. <laughs> uh, and uh, mashallah, we had a lot of khutbah regarding perfect happiness. And uh, yeah. this speech was along with uh, many of them. And uh, subhanAllah. Um, what do you think that believing in the perfect happiness aligns with believing that God's omnipotence? And um, I, I'm sure that um, all of us, we know that only true believers, they know that perfect happiness uh, it is for God's servants, those who follow his commands and those who believe in his omnipotence and his power. Mm -hmm. um, maybe you can elaborate more on that. Yeah, definitely. You. Um, you know, about God's omnipotence, right? Um, we know that only God possesses power and that means that he controls everything in your life. He controls everybody in your life. And, you know, that means that when we are pro uh, promised uh, perfect happiness, that can only be perfect because God is perfect. He controls everything. So there is nothing that is out of his control or can go wrong or you can have a problem. No. So I think it's definitely related to God's qualities, knowing that God um, is omnipotent. He possesses all power. Um, and I think that a lot of times, as I listed above, you know, that's what happens. People start giving power. And this happens to myself, too. You know, we, we all have to check ourselves constantly, God willing, that, okay, am I giving power to somebody? Oh, this, this guy can make me happy. Or, oh... If I have this house or that money, I'll feel better, you know. And this is directly giving power to something other than God. So, yeah, mashallah, great question. That's exactly, yeah. Mashallah, thank you very much. It was very nice. But I have some uh, understanding from your speech while you were showing different type of happiness, fake happiness. There is a true happiness and there's a fake happiness. I think those fake ones are not making our soul happy. It makes our gen happy. 
Our gen takes over, and we think we are happy by drinking. We are happy with smoking. We are happy with meditation. We are happy with spending time with people that they are not righteous. That that is a fake one, and it's gen taking over. Our gen is taking over. And we do not realize that this is not us happy. This is our gen. If we smile and we are jumping up and down, our gen is running the whole show. He is the driver of our body, not our soul. Mm -hmm. The true happiness that you mentioned comes only from God. But fake happiness comes, am I right in your explanation? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Alcohol, it's drugs, it's they're just for satisfying our gen, not us. Right, yeah. Thank you. I actually, can I cl clarify something? I think it's important for me to, to mention that, um, you know, money and family and all these things, definitely the believers will actually enjoy these things, right? But the difference is that the disbelievers, because they give it power, they don't actually enjoy it, really. So I, I want to make it clear that, you know, those are blessings, right? God's blessings, but if you appreciate it in the right way. So just to clarify that, yeah. Um, praise God, you covered all the way that people think that they're going to they're gonna be happy, which is not true. Um, I was thinking that God, then God promised uh, to the believers that absolutely God's allies, they have nothing to fear, not to grieve. Then says there are those who believe and lead a righteous life. So in case if a submitter doesn't feel happy, what do you think they have to check? They believe or righteous life? In your point of view, um, I think that it's it's related their belief and leading a righteous life. Is that your question? Like, so yes, so definitely they have to check that are they going someplace wrong? Are they they are not righteous enough, or um, they have another source? Mashallah, you covered it. If you have anyone besides God as a God for yourself, to definitely that God cannot guarantee your happiness. So you believe that the problem is about even is your belief or running a righteous life? Yeah, I think that, you know, our belief is oftentimes showed in our actions, which is leading a righteous life. So if, you know, we had a lot of speeches about like anger or fear, and if I'm not like 100% sure about that God is controlling everything, I might have fear. So I see the belief and leading a righteous life is definitely, you know, hand in hand. Um, Thanks, Rashad. Yeah. That was a good one. Hello. Salaam alaikum, Misha. Great speech. I was a bit late, but mashallah. Uh, I wanted to understand uh, from you as well, one of the... Um, one of the main factors for me in seeking happiness as well is prioritizing the hereafter. Uh, in the Quran, it talks a lot about the hereafter and prioritizing that. Uh, in, for example, in 42.20, it says, whomever seeks the rewards of the hereafter, we multiply the rewards for him, and whomever seeks the materials of this world, we give him therefrom, and then he receives no share in the hereafter. And my understanding is that prioritizing the hereafter in this world gives you the rewards there and here. So I just wanted to get a bit more of your view on the hereafter factor yeah. of happiness. Definitely. Um, you know, I think, once again, like, it's, it's all related, right? Because if we believe in God, then we also believe in the hereafter. And, you know, we follow God's words and, and lead a righteous life because we're growing our soul and we're working towards, you know, God willing, returning back to God. And it definitely, if you have the correct priority in that sense, right? One great example is Friday prayer. If my priority is pleasing God and, and working towards the hereafter, then I'm going to drop all business, all of my worldly materials or whatever. And, um, and I realize that this is the correct priority and... You know, you're following what God says. So, so yeah, I think it's definitely, definitely related, your priority and everything. It just comes back to, um, you know, believing in, in what God says, following God's words. And, yeah, Marshall, that was, yeah, great question. <laughs> Salam. 
Salam alaikum, It was a wonderful speech, mashallah. I wanted to get some, uh, maybe if you can share a short story about how you pass on the message to um, non-believers or non-submitters. Um, and the reason why I asked that and how it's related to your speech is because when I do, I do bring up perfect happiness. Yeah. I'm not always successful in that. Um, for instance, I had a very intense conversation with a friend, a good friend of mine who's a believer about perfect happiness. And mm -hmm. we had you know, a very long conversation this week about her progress through therapy and what she realized and you know how she's reached a certain point in her life, which is to a certain extent some happiness. But I was drawing a parallel from what I've understood through Quran study, Friday prayer, and making God my priority, and coming to the same feeling and conclusions. Um, so how do you, can you share a, a, a story about how you've passed on the message using perfect happiness? Yeah, um, I mean, personally, I, I usually use my own life as an example, like um, prior to becoming a submitter, uh, just, you know, how many problems I had, and everything was temporary. Like, if I, had a, if I had a good day, it would just be followed by a week of problems, right? Um, but, you know, I think it's just proven, right? I think a good way you can pass the message is also speaking factually, right? We have so many people uh, throughout time, and even now, we look at the celebrities, for example, right? They, quote unquote, have everything. Um, and you would think that they don't have any problems. They have money, they have fame, good looks, all of that. So I think if you, if you use that as an example to say, well, look, these people are committing suicide. They're depressed, right? So there has to be something other than, you know, worldly materials or, you know, seeking happiness through, through people, you know? And I think that maybe explaining it in that way, because nobody can deny it, right? Like, these people aren't happy, you know? So inshallah, we're going to take one more hand, um, Q, and then we're going to go on to our next speaker. So go ahead, Q. Mashallah, um, we've heard uh, comments recently that, uh, you know, believing perfect happiness is a very small detail of our religion, and that um, this is not that important uh, to believe in. Uh, and also, um, this one part, and the other part of my question is that, um, how, uh, you know, uh, uh, why, why is it that m most people have a hard time believing in perfect happiness? Uh, uh, especially, uh, even, even people who accept the Quran and, and they still struggle uh, accepting that. Can you elaborate on that and also on the first question? Yeah. Well, why, uh, is it, why is it a small detail uh, for some uh, and, and it's not like the major part of the religion? Yeah. Uh, God willing, I'll try. So... Uh, your, your second question first, um, why it's difficult for people who even like, you know, accept submission to, to really believe in perfect happiness. And I don't know, this is from my experience and what, what I think, I'm not sure, but I think it's because, I mean, we all have weaknesses, right? Especially in, in the beginning of submission, we, we transgress and we, we fall, in, you know, out of God's kingdom and we get consequences, right? And... It's not easy for, for you to, to reflect and say, this bad thing happened to me because I did something wrong. It's, it's the ego, you know, kicks in, and it's really hard to accept that and to um, reflect and say, I'm wrong, right? You know, and, and also it really has to do with knowing God and, you know, that God possesses all power and so I think that it's difficult because we have our like people you know they have weaknesses and they don't want to accept that oh I'm doing something wrong so instead they turn it around and they will bend the system or bend the verses and unfortunately it's pretty much blaming God right because you're saying that no I'm not doing something wrong God just didn't control this, or God, you know, or like God would let something bad happen even if I don't deserve it, right? It's, and that actually goes to your first question, 
it's not a small thing at all. Because what I just said, right? Perfect happiness has to do with, you know, everything. That's your life. Like how, how your life is, every detail of it, this directly has to do with who God is. And, yeah, and God's kingdom, exactly. And if we don't know God truly, then that means we're not really worshiping him alone, right? Um, so, yeah. Let's give a round of applause for Nusha. Uh,